Hey guys, uh, welcome to uh, Arcade Hacker, um, and actually also welcome to uh, my uh, first video ever. Um, uh, I decided to uh, make uh, to make this uh, Wix video post um, a video rather than an article itself because of, of the uh, density of uh, perhaps uh, the information that I'm going to be uh, uh, sharing with you and and so on. Uh, making an article uh, about uh, the CPU itself and, and all of the insights can, can get quite dense and, and maybe also uh, get quite difficult uh, for people to follow. So basically I decided to, to give it a go and, and you know, make you all uh, a nice video. So, um, hey, here is it, right? Um, this is the, uh, say, promise last week. This is the uh, the CPU uh, exposed. This is the hardware attack on, on Kabuki. You know from the... Uh, uh, previous uh, series of posts, uh, we've been covering several areas from the background of the CPU all of the way to uh, trying to think um, how could this possibly uh, operate all of the assumptions and so on as well as trying to uh, uh, through uh, software means uh, trying to break in or at least take control of it and, and we'll learn several things uh, about the CPU and, and so on but this time uh, this is it right this is the final frontier and this is a uh, this is as real, as real as it gets. Um, what you're looking at here is the uh, is the all of the CPU area, and you need to imagine uh, uh, that this actually it's you know right here in the middle, uh, very tiny, very few millimeters, and um, all of the uh, characteristics that you see here in the in the borders uh, are what they known as the the bonding wires as well as the Connecting pads, you can see here the square area in you know the, the pads, the buffers uh, that basically lead to the to, lead to the inside, and also the uh, the gold wires, uh, the gold bonding wires. And actually, if you want to get rich fast, I guess if you get a, a few billion of these all put together, you'll make uh, a small uh, fortune to yourself. Uh, jokes aside. Um, um, what you are looking at is, is you know, the real thing. And um, before we dive in, um, I also wanted to share with you uh, how massive this uh, image actually is. If you look up here, um, this this image it's uh, more than eighteen thousand uh, pixels by eighteen thousand pixels. Not even my my DSLR camera is able to do an image as big as this one and actually no no, no microscope that I know is able to produce uh, on a single shot something like this and you need to think of this image as a composition of many um, photos together so small shots small perhaps as say this they all uh, all put together inside of uh, a graphics um, application like this one this is a uh, uh, GIMP it's basically a free alternative to uh, Photoshop, it works. And um, yeah, once you put everything together and it's ni nicely aligned, then you can have something as dense and, you know, uh, information rich as, as this. But it takes a while, trust me, it takes really a, a while to get here. So, um, the Kabuki, this is it. Um, I made up um, a graphic uh, that basically highlights the different areas so you can get uh, a better understanding of what's going on here. But uh, we saw this large uh, block on the left, and this is the C80 uh, CMOS part, um, also manufactured by the same company. And then in red, the different areas of uh, the CPU that actually are Kabuki itself, right? So all of the control areas and decryption and so on, everything it's here in red. So there's no there's no room for... for uh, for any misspace or anything, everything is really uh, taken care of, right? So the whole CPU it's full of uh, uh, transistors and processing, and, and, and you'll see when when we dive in. So the the, the left part, uh, as I was saying, is the C80 uh, uh, CMOS part, and you know it's it's marked. If we look into the detail, it's marked uh, up here. Uh, Sorry, that is upside down. I'll explain you in a minute why that's the case. But um, we can see several marks in here. I have them also right here, all reverse, so we can see them correctly. And it says BSLI 87M84C00. And um, 
if we look at the internet and we look for uh, this part, we can see here that, yeah, indeed, it's a Scilog uh, CPU as per the Scilog catalog, and this is the CMOS part. We also have the C8400, that's the MMOS, the original part for, uh, for the uh, C80 CPU, and down here we have the specifications of uh, the CMOS version. Actually, um, I, I haven't seen any, I didn't see this before, and I was qu quite amazed of finding out that the C80 is able to reach uh, speeds, speeds as, uh, as, uh, as fast as 20 megahertz. I mean, that's quite impressive for, uh, for an old CPU, right? I remember from my old Amstrad CPC computer that it, it has one of these uh, uh, C80 uh, processors inside that perhaps ran at 2, 3, 4 megahertz. I can't really uh, remember right now, but we're talking here maximum speed of 20 uh, megahertz. Uh, most probably the uh, the Kabuki is made um, out of this uh, part specifically because it reaches 8 megahertz and if memory doesn't fail, uh, Pang for example uh, runs at um, 8, 8 megahertz. So it could be this one, it could be this one, but the point is yeah it's a seamless uh, CPU and uh, I guess that the main difference to any other CPU or C80 CPU in the world is the fact that BSLI, the, the company that that manufactured this uh, and our markings uh, confirm this, right? Uh, here, BSLI, uh, copyright 87, that's, this is something that we can find down here. Kabuki, ta ta ta, Kabuki 87, Tokyo, October, that's probably the date that that the CPU got designed, and yeah, what what we can uh, I guess uh, make sense out of this is that BSLI uh, took the Scilog uh, uh, design and, and repurposed it, as I explained in one of the previous uh, blog posts, as a mega cell component, right? And and that main difference against any other standard C80 CPU is that the design itself can be reused and repurposed. Uh, and combined, like this is the case with with other uh, computing computing blocks or electronics. Um, so what else can we uh, look at uh, look at here? So I guess the uh, the pins themselves, right? So I was explaining to you that these are the, the 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 bonding wires and the pads and everything that connects to the outside wall. We can see here <coughs> pin number eleven. And by the way, this is the reason why I have uh, the, the design upside down, as you can see here. It's because uh, uh, oh, well, it, it matches the, the packaging. If we look at the, the image here, we can see the packaging being this way, and pin number one is here, 11 is probably somewhere here, and you can see 11 down here. And this is, if memory doesn't fail, uh, this is pin number one, and uh, yeah. The, 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 from the outside, it makes sense that the design is laid out like this, but I guess the designers did it the other way around and then did the packaging this way. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so pins. Uh, you remember that the Kabuki, uh, or the Kabuki's main difference uh, from the outside to any other uh, standard C CPU, it's uh, pin 28 the almighty pin 28 that um, basically does not hold the refresh line if you remember from the previous posts the uh, the refresh line is what's missing on the uh, uh, c80 kabuki cpu you can use it it's, it's something that on standard uh, c80 cpus is used to refresh dynamic memories which is not the case in uh, in, in this design, it doesn't have it. I mean, and if we look closely to the uh, to the pin itself, it's missing one of the, uh, the buffers. And uh, uh, basically, what it does, it, it has this large pad that goes inside, and it takes in the the, the voltage from the battery that is connected to uh, uh, to the more to the motherboard. And um, actually. I did backtrace this, and I found that that the design actually has refresh, but uh, actually the line comes all the way here, and if you can see this pink colored looking uh, 
uh, spot here, it's terminated right here. This this pink bit is uh, polysilicon. It's one of the materials that uh, are used inside uh, CPU designs, and um, not only um, it's used to build transistors, but also um, acts as a resistor. So I guess what they did here is not connect the refresh line and terminate it right here using a bit of a, uh, a resistor uh, here, which is, as I said, uh, a polysilicon silicon material um, so yeah um, and if we uh, and if we follow these uh, this path we can see that it goes all the way inside it could be a bit tricky to uh, to make sense out of this but you know I've uh, I've dedicated my time and I know for sure that uh, this track actually brings the power inside the kabuki parts in you know when you lose your your nice uh, battery in, in your favorite game, uh, being Pan, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, whatever game you, you use that is powered by Kabuki. When you lose power here, bang, all of this section right here loses power. And guess what? Uh, yeah, that's where the memory contents are. So um, if we look at this from more of a bird's view, we can see the different blocks and let me tell you what they are so uh, we already said this part here is the CA and I just told you that this part right here all of this block is the memory that is physically connected to pin 28 up here and when it loses power this area loses power and the memory contents are gone um, we also have um, um, two blocks here in here which actually um, have um, quite a lot of, of, uh, of logic and um, you need to think of a standard uh, C80 CPUs again like as a single block probably uh, occupying the whole die area but in this case uh, what the Kabuki designers did is uh, rather than implementing the CPU gates directly and hacking them or something like that they recreate uh, a number of gates down here as well as up here specifically for for the design and what happens is if we take a look down here we can see one two three four five six seven eight these are uh, the eight uh, data bits that get in right here and then up here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, and these are the uh, the address line, 16 bits, right? So this is it. This one's in pairs of two, uh, symmetrical designs. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and they are all connected and mix, mesh, mesh together and mixed together with uh, uh, the custom gates uh, uh, built for the Kabuki, and I guess the. That's one of the main differences when it comes to interconnection. And the reason why they implemented their custom gates is because they need to control uh, several situations. And if we look at this graphic that I uh, made up here, um, uh, this, obviously there's more into it, but this in essence is what uh, Kabuki needs to manage in order to successfully operate, although there's more to it, and um, I'll explain you this in, in today's or next week's uh, final video. But um, in order, the way the, the, the Kabuki encryption works, in order to, to operate, it really needs to take uh, a look into the data uh, bits, as well as the address uh, lines, and some controls areas, right? And the reason being is uh, because uh, obviously it needs to read uh, data, and it needs to decrypt that data, and also it needs to understand what the current address uh, request uh, is so it's able to decode uh, uh, the data correctly remember that the uh, kabuki encryption is very much related to uh, um, uh, to the address uh, in where the bytes are stored because every address uh, participates in the decryption process and depending uh, of the uh, of the byte being an opcode or an argument of an opcode or a data byte, also the address is is manipulated by the Kabuki, so the encryption is slightly uh, different. Also, um, it needs to 
be able to see several control lines and the basics of the operation uh, most probably are related to the refresh line because uh, obviously uh, this is not present uh, in the Kabuki design. Uh, it uses this for powering the, uh, the, the custom memory and then uh, memory request or IO, IO request are definitely also under supervision, one of them, uh, because uh, the Kabuki from the software experiments that we did um, and the analysis uh, only decodes memory accesses. It's, it doesn't uh, deal with I/O uh, requests, and I'm not get, I will not get into details as to what I/O requests are in the CAD CPU, but they are meant for interfacing for with other components rather than memory itself. And one definitely a line that Kabuki must control because um, this is what differentiates on the um, C80 uh, CPU uh, and tells uh, whether you are accessing an opcode or an opcode argument or a data, pure data byte. And um, yeah, when this is high, it means one thing. When this is low, it means another thing. And it's very much related to, again, in combination with the address lines, in how data is decrypted. And read, obviously, it's uh, another thing that is important because, uh, as we know, uh, Kabuki, when it's on operation, it only uh, acts on reading, not writing. So it does not encrypt, it only decrypts. So it needs to know when it's writing or reading, right? And definitely either the read line uh, or the write line must be also uh, under supervision. So um, this is uh, in a nutshell why, uh, among other things, they had to create custom uh, gates. And um, I guess the What's important here is that the complexity is quite high because you need to think of uh, of gates as uh, very dynamic things. On the C80 part, uh, we know that data is bidirectional, so the CPU can be uh, writing, so outputting data as well as inputting data, and also through a stating, right? Because it needs to be able to release the data pass, so other components in the in your design are able to interface with the uh, with the bus. The same um, with the address line, uh, to the exception that the address line is only an output. Uh, uh, the CPU requests address lines and a few other things uh, uh, through these lines, but doesn't take anything in uh, through them. And uh, also, they need to be uh, to be stated. And I guess, without being an expert here, uh, I guess that's also why on the original C80 design, the data buses are so large compared to the uh, address line buses, which is only half of these things. Remember, they are symmetrical in pairs. And I guess it's because they don't act as uh, output, uh, sorry, input gates. Uh, they are all only uh, uh, inputs and thread states. And actually, to, to the point, uh, this here, this block on the uh, uh, original C80 uh, part, this is the inputs for and outputs of the uh, control lines, so the uh, control bits. I think I have a pinout here of the uh, 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 CPU, CID CPU, and if we look at this uh, graphic here, we can see that uh, it has a bunch of control uh, uh, pins, so either outputs or inputs, and and these ones don't need to be three state or anything. And I guess again, without being a, an expert uh, on this, I guess this is why they are so uh, more simple compared to uh, the address line. Uh, uh, buses or the uh, the buses for or gates for the uh, the data uh, bits which seem to be the the ones that are more uh, complex so yeah um, standard standard gates or buses here um, we have them here and they take over uh, the c80 uh, CPU uh, gates and they definitely interface with everything. Right, so I already told you that this was the memory area of the Kabuki. This is where everything is stored, and to the record is 108 bits exact in the serial uh, serial memory. And to explain you what serial memory is, I found this nice uh, page on the internet that tells you, and it's basically a stack and um, succession of uh, of memory registers, one hanging from another. And 
uh, the uh, the output of uh, of one of them is directly attached to the next one and the next one and the next one and so on, right? So they all in a cascade. And in order to write in in this memory, you need to do it sequentially. So for you guys, uh, experts out there, probably you already know that uh, uh, the uh, the way you you are able to program this uh, this CPU, the Kabuki, it's uh, it's a serial protocol because the memory is. Uh, its uh, layout, uh, if we look into here, is layout in a serial uh, way. Do not try to make sense of uh, what's going on in here because it's quite crazy. I mean, I'm not sure if this, uh, if this extreme complexity of the uh, uh, interrelation of all components is so dense and so random, if this is because they designed it like this or this is uh, just to make you know the reverse engineering life harder or basically because the computer that designed this and helped the engineers the original engineers uh design it took the decision that this is the most uh, uh, effective and uh, efficient uh, way to interconnect everything but it's quite quite dense and quite crazy actually it gets really difficult to follow and just to finish with uh this week's post uh uh I also wanted to tell you that uh, yeah, this is the memory where it's everything is uh, written. Um, here we have all of this block. It's uh, the decryption uh, area. So we have the data lines coming in here, and there's some source part of the decryption algorithm happening here, and then the rest of the logic directly attached. See the big bus coming in here. This is where all of the uh, address lines terminate, and this is the where the decryption. Uh, the most of the decryption happens and then everything is uh, rerouted again through here we can see it here into the CPU via another bus you can see here that it really connects uh, into the CPU and the eight data bits are sent uh, to the inside and um, up here this is the most important far, uh, part for the F4 of reverse engineering and reprogramming the, uh, the Kabuki. This is the programming control. And this is the area that on my next uh, video uh, blog, most probably next week, although it's gonna be Christmas and I'm not promising anything, but if it's not next week, definitely it's gonna be the, the following one. This is the area that I'm gonna be uh, showing you in detail. We're gonna be decaping the uh, CPU so we are able to expose everything. You need, the reason being is that this is CMOS in a two-layer metal uh, process, meaning we're not seeing the silicon itself here. What we see, it's actually two metal layers and then the, the silicon and the transistors underneath. So uh, uh, yeah, it was necessary to decap uh, and deprocess the CPU in two separate layers in order to access uh, access what's going on in here and you know being able to ex to expose its secrets so thank you all for watching uh, this um, this video and i hope you enjoyed and uh, look forward to delivering you the final uh, video on kabuki